got to see this. The movie is called Delirium. Uh, we're not going to go into a whole big super thing on it because part of the thing about the movie is the script takes a few uh, left turns. And you should not know the left turns before you see it. And yeah, that is the charm of the movie. You, it is the charm of the movie. You think it's this. And then it's that. It's a regional It's a regional film made out of St. Louis. It's directed by a fellow named Peter Maris, uh, who ended up doing a lot of straight-to-video action movies. However, this actually played theatrically. How do I know? Because I almost saw it. If you're, if you're interested in checking out Delirium, I would recommend... Okay, well, I'll just read the back. Yeah, who, who, put until, that video, who put that tape out? And what, oh, what year was Delirium? Oh, yeah, forget, okay. This is an Academy Home Video. Cheap company back then, but actually by the 90s, they were actually producing movies. Yeah. But I will read the first quarter of the back. Delirium. Charlie is a psycho. His twisted mind drives him to butcher beautiful young women. Tormented by his past, he brutally murders again and again. He must be stopped. But how? And then I stopped. I didn't go to drive-ins that often, but at some point in the early 80s, uh, usually when I went to a drive-in on my own in the 80s, it was because usually because they were showing like a, some movie as a second feature that you couldn't find anywhere else, or it was like a triple feature. So like three exploitation movies back to back, you know, uh, Sleepaway Camp and Brain Damage and Delirium. That that actually might have been the triple feature, yeah. frankly, to tell you the truth. So I went to see them, and then Delirium was the third movie. And yeah, I'd never heard of it, but sounds like a horror film. And I started watching it, and it was the third film. It's like 11 o'clock, 11.30 at night. I was tired. And the movie looked like the same thing I'd seen a zillion times before, just a... Maniac killer killing one woman after another and awkward cops discussing the case. So uh, I thought, okay, fuck this shit. I ain't going to stay here for this. You know, so I, I drove, drove away. When I'm watching Delirium, I did not recognize the title, but I recognized Charlie. So when I was watching <laughs> the movie, wait a minute, this is that drive-in movie. Once Charlie got, once Charlie stole the car, once Charlie stole the car, that's when I realized, oh, this is that movie. I walked out on this. I drove I drove out. <laughs> I, I drove, drove out, out on this. this. <laughs> I drove out on the, the bottom of the, the, the triple feature because I recognized Charlie. You your headlights on. You're going over I, all the bumps in the I, drive-in. Yeah, then I recognized like, the title. I recognized Charlie. And it was the driving scene. That was when I realized, holy shit. Little did I know how wrong I was yeah. by leaving the movie because I thought it would be one note. This is really a movie that if you're like out looking for it and you're listening to this right now and you're like, I'm going to look it up and I'm going to look up information on it. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. You might not want to. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, there's a new Blu-ray of it that just came out. Do not read the back of it. Do not read any advertisements on it. Do not go to Letterbox trying to find it. Because Don't the re only reason to watch this movie is for these fantastic kind of tonal shifts. It's for this script to take you where you... moves It's for this script to take you places you don't expect to go. Yeah, it's the literally, oh, what? Like, I literally, I turned to you in the middle of this movie and I said, is this what I think it is? Okay, so <laughs> one of the reasons why the film is so surprising by the turns it takes is because it's a woman-hating maniac on a rampage. Yeah, man runs amok. Yeah, so it's a, he's it's not a slasher film. He's not the, a slasher film character, nor is it a, a serial killer movie. He's not a serial killer per se, uh, and it's nothing realistic like you know. And it, nor is it, and even though he does have, he's a Vietnam veteran, so uh, and he's got problem so he does have a psychological <laughs> aspect to why he's doing what he's doing but they're not investing big time in the psychological aspect like norman bates or like the the lead character in uh, don't go in the house even though he has a psychological bit uh, he's just a woman hating maniac killer on a rampage he, he kills a woman he walks down the street, he keeps going till he bumps into another woman and then he kills her. And then he bumps into some other people, he kills them. He bumps into another woman, he kills her. Now, it just so happens that on this killer's path, they manage to find young gals wearing short shorts that, 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 that periodically show up every 20 minutes. They're all <laughs> blonde. It's a universe of blonde. Oh, the hitchhiker's people. not blonde. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, the hitchhiker is, His, uh, hitchhiker's a brunette. Brunette, uh, brunette. 
And the movie sets itself up that that is what it's going to be. So he's the killer is just going out, wiping out all these women. Uh, and then there's the cops. Yeah. That are like, who know that this killer is out there and they're starting their investigation. And there's a woman who who actually knows what he looks like, who kind of turns him on to who this guy is. And so now they got to protect her. But the thing about the murders that the guy is doing, one of the things I like about the murders is the fact that there is a real, I've used the word cynical and nihilistic in a bad way in talking about Moonraker. Here I'm using it in a good way. Because it's a nasty piece of work, the whole first 20 minutes of the movie. Because it's not trying to be a slasher film. It's not trying to be a maniac movie. It's not trying to be a serial killer movie. It has the feeling, it has the nastiness of an early 70s roughy about a killer. And what a roughy is were early X-rated movies that they came out with in the late 60s and the early 70s that while they had a sexual vibe, they also had a violence vibe. Mm -hmm. They're actually emphasizing the misogyny of it. Now, I like that in this movie. I like the fact that it's that's rough. That it's, 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 it, it's tough. It's a little, little queasy feeling. Yeah, it has that kind of like, I spit on your grave aesthetic. Yeah, but even that's almost rough. too like, no, yeah, yeah. Even that's a, a, a little on the higher end. But yes, you're right. <laughs> you're right. That is a little on the <laughs> yeah, higher no, end. Yeah, you're right. But. One of the things I like about that in the terms of this movie, aside from just, I, you know, I, li I like roughness like that, especially in violence, uh, is it also sets you up for the one note quality of the thing. Well, it's just going to be him just killing this one and this one and this one and these stupid cops trying to figure out who he is. And I've seen many movies. That are, mm. That's the whole film. Yeah. When and it first started, I, my, what I was thinking in my head was... Mm -hmm. Why does Quentin think this is so special? Yes, exactly. It's like everything else. Okay. And, and I was kind of humoring you to be at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I was just getting into the very good uh, practical gags that they do. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, for a little regional movie, a low budget movie made well, the, at this the, time period. The killer, the killer is a guy named Charlie. He doesn't say a word in the whole film. I'm not saying the guy's giving a good performance, but he's effective. By sticking to his one note performance, it accumulates. And the cops like a grimy Michael Onkian or yeah, something yeah. like and the and the cops get better and better. A lot of these regional movies, they they shoot them more or less in order. And you can see these untrained actors be awkward at the beginning, but you see them warming up to it. You see them getting better and better. You see them getting more comfortable being on camera, having a good time, kind mm -hmm. of getting into it. And I actually ended up, by mid-movie, I ended up really liking those cops. I actually thought they were pretty good. Well, yeah, And I, I really liked the, the lead girl in it, too. But it's one note aspect of it is part of its effect because the movie has other fish to fry. It has more of a story to tell. Which we cannot get into. Which we cannot get into because that's going to ruin your enjoyment of it. And which is so frustrating for me because those moments are so Well, that's, um, well, that's the stuff you want to get more in detail about. Yeah, and, and, and those are the things that absolutely make this movie 100% personal yeah. propaganda as opposed to yeah. corporate propaganda. And, it's, it, and it, it stays with you. It has something to say, this movie. Uh, and... Peter Maris does a really good job. I've never I'm, heard of Peter, Peter Maris. Who, who, who is he? Well, he well he ended up directing, this is his first. I, mean, I know it's a little regional movie, but. This is his first movie, but he ends up directing quite a few movies uh, that go uh, uh, straight to videos all leading up into the 90s. And uh, 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 I've watched the first half hour of one of them, kind of a big budget movie for him called Hangfire with Jan Michael Vincent and Brad Davis and a whole slew of uh, uh, slumming supporting actors. And that's a pretty good movie. Well, one thing that's kind of funny about uh, Peter Maris's later career is he's, he seems to stay on the same story. So it's like uh, one movie is called Terror Squad is uh, a bunch of Libyan terrorists take over a nuclear power plant. And so like Chuck Connors has to stop him. Yeah, who else? All right. And then this movie, <laughs> Hangfire, a bunch of escaped convicts take over a town and Brad Davis, the sheriff, has to stop them. Yeah. Uh, then another one is uh, John Schneider. It's called Ministry of Vengeance. And John Schneider is a, a priest. And then a bunch of 
Arab terrorists kill his wife and he goes on a uh, rampage. That sounds great. <laughs> I would totally see that movie. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> that me sounds too. awesome. He has one with Linda Pearl and James Tolkien. You know, the, the bald yeah. guy from uh, uh, Top Gun. Yeah. I can't believe I gotta give you guys your shot. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> saying both of you <laughs> to Top Gun, Gun, that guy. The guy is always rubbing his I head. I can't and, believe I've got, I'm doing this. I can't believe I gotta do this. <laughs> so it's like, uh, one, I can't wait to watch uh, uh, Hang Fire with Roger so we can actually watch Peter Maris with a budget and like like the closest thing he will ever come to like a, a genuine Hollywood production. I don't think this is giving uh, too much away, but uh, and I think we already said it. Charlie is a Vietnam vet. Yes. And they have that great gag with the guy going on the hang. Well, okay, well, well, also one of the but, other things that makes me appreciate Delirium big time is one of the things that I love <laughs> in cheap movies is cheap movies doing Vietnam flashbacks. Yeah. I, I never do it, not like cheap movies doing Vietnam flashback yeah. and the cheaper, the better. Yeah. In the kind of brush outside of St. Louis. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's Vietnam. Yes. Okay. So whether it's delirium or thou shall not kill, except uh, Seth, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, no, frankly, the only cheap movie to pull off uh, uh, a Vietnam flashback that actually is legit is Brotherhood of Death. Yeah. They have a really good Vietnam flashback. The thing about Delirium that is absolutely positively ridiculous is the entire story you hear about him the, the night before. Because you just see him as a raving lunatic that every woman he sees, he kills. But apparently the night before... He's like vibing with a girl and they're really hitting it off. And like he's he's partying with uh, her and her roommate. And like, who the fuck is that guy? What? And it never mentions what set him off to such a degree that now he's just, you know, he's just a Terminator on kill. (laughs) Okay, I will mention one thing, a scene that doesn't give away anything. Um because it's a pretty good scene. It's the scene that actually got me invested in the movie as a movie. The girl tells the whole story about, well, you know, she's a secretary and the guy came uh, asking for a job and then uh, he was led into his boss's office and then they had a talk and apparently he filled out a a job application and uh, he comes out and everything seems pretty cool. Like it sounded like he had a good meeting with the with the boss. Again, we don't see any of this. This is all just the woman telling us. Uh, but then, you know, so she goes out with a roommate and they're in a club, they're in a nightclub or a bar or something. And they come across this guy. They go, hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you doing? And so now they're hanging out and then it becomes pretty obvious that the roommate and Charlie are really vibing. And so finally the roommate says, hey, can you get another ride home? I think I'm going to go off with this guy. Oh, yeah, great. Sure. Fine. And then it goes off and then she comes home and then finds her roommate dead. And then she starts talking to the cops and saying, "Ah, maybe this Charlie guy did it. I don't know. But it was the last person who was with my roommate that, that I know. So do you know his last name? Well, no, he, Charlie never said his last name. But, you know, he came and saw my boss. He, I, he filled out a job application. Well, okay. So they call up the boss, wake him up in the middle of the night. He goes, and he, he kind of stonewalls. Him. I don't know what you're talking about. I talked to the guy. I didn't really, he didn't have any references. So I just threw him out. Really, huh? So it's the next, the next day. I actually oh. really like that actor. That yeah, guy yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's like, but we don't see, we haven't met the guy yet. Yeah. So the cops are like, well, let's go down there and let's talk to the guy personally. All right. So they go down and he's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I really can't help you. You know, he didn't have any references. Uh, I don't hire anybody with references. So, I, uh, you know, I, 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 I told him to go. Well, you know. Your secretary says he was in here long enough that she was under the impression that he filled out a, a job application. No, there's no point. I mean, I'm, without references, there's no point in hiring him. So I didn't even bother. I just sent him out. Okay, so did he say his last name? Well, I can't even remember if he did. I mean, I, I, he probably did, but I'm sorry. I, I can't help you. I don't remember it. And the cop goes, look, man. <laughs> <laughs> this man brutally murdered this woman. It's it's terrible what he did to her. It's 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 the roommate of your own secretary, and you can't give us any more than that. Well, I'm sorry. I can't remember. I'm sorry, but I can't. 
you are the only person to see this person. They're going out, they're killing people all the way. Well, what the hell do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> this guy stonewalling the cops oh. is a really good scene. This it's guy- when I started liking the cops more. Yeah. It's when the when the acting all took a, a turn for the better. Oh, and later on, even when he's alone on the phone, yeah. when he's delivering like his lines on the phone. And no, I getting- like that guy. I like guy through the whole movie. He's getting the completely guy. agitated. Yeah. Like he's the only one who's having to deal with the shit that's going yeah. down. One of the things I, I like about this movie is that, you know, you always hear like, you know, man runs amok, kills two. <laughs> and you're like, God, he didn't really run amok very well, did yeah. he? <laughs> like if I'm going to run amok, I'm going to like kill at least 15 or 20. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Maybe cut that part. <laughs> no, don't cut that. <laughs> but like, in this movie, man runs amok. Man runs amok. Man is running amok. 